What's up y'all, how's everyone doing today? Lore Lovers RS back at you with another returning RuneScape series. And this episode, we're gonna jump into RuneSpan and really just kind of like RuneCrafting as a whole, I think. We're starting off with our Cooking Daily Challenge. And I've already done the Archaeology Daily Challenge that I had because I didn't remember to actually block that after we got level 20 but it is what it is but we're about to finish our cooking daily challenge and we are up to level 10 before i turn the challenge in and now we are up to level 11 and that's got us at a total level of 148 and we have some levels for some quests now okay but yeah this is going to be a rune crafting episode i believe since we have the rune span daily challenge and we could probably fill enough Room crafting content to make a full episode. So we're gonna go ahead and talk to Carwin Essence Binder. Mages need runes to cast spells. Berthorpe needs mages to defend it. Anything you can do to help out with rune crafting would be much appreciated. Tell me more about rune crafting. When you cast a spell, you tap into the latent power of runes. Naturally occurring runes are incredibly rare, but the recently rediscovered art of rune crafting allows us to create them ourselves. By acquiring special essence stones and infusing them at an elemental altar, you make it possible for mages to work their magic. And we're not going to teleport to the essence mine just yet, but so she's telling us about just like the normal runecrafting method, and then Phoenix was telling us about the alternative method, which is rune span. Well, we're going to go ahead and talk to Tam McGruber here because you'll Hello see us. Thanks for stopping. Let me tell you about what I have here. I don't know why it's just that first line that's voice acted. Are those hoods? Not just hoods. These are wicked hoods. I, I call them that because they're so cool that they look kind of evil too. or And they look kind of evil too. Not only will you look like a serious wizard in one of these, you can use as magical powers to help, you, help your spell casting too. What magical powers? It can create free runes and rune, rune essence for casting spells with, and it can occasionally teleport you to the mysterious runes Ruins where ruins are crafted. Log. Oh, you can't get a wicked hood on a free-to-play server. Well, that's embarrassing. But we'll keep it in the video. We do it live. All right, since we don't have the wicked hood, we just have our air talisman like normal. That should get us in the air altar here in Verok. Hello, fellow rune crafter. How can I help you? What are you researching? Well, the rune crafting wizards have got themselves into a bit of a state over a thesis published by a student, that being Phoenix. What did this paper say? Well, in short, it states that one day the altars like this like this one could run out of runic energy. That's terrible. How will humans perform magic if we cannot make runes? Well, it is still only a theory. Hardly any of the runecrafting guild wizards believe it to be true. Still, we have not proved Wizard Phoenix's theories to be incorrect yet, and if they're true, this is very worrying. Wizards have been dispatched to all of the known altars to investigate. So what can we do if Wizard Phoenix theories are true? Well, there is a new method being explored which has detailed in Wizard Phoenix's theory or thesis. He is the best person to explain it to you. He is currently in the Wizard's Tower if you want to speak to him. All right, we're not going to travel to the Wizard's Tower yet, but what I am going to do, just kind of to give you all an idea on how room crafting works the normal way. All right, can you teleport me to the Essence Mine? And she will send us to the essence mine. So this is what uh, Cedridor, I think, was talking about whenever he said, oh, we got a mining level. He said that wizards can send us here, but there's only a select few who actually know the spell to send us here. All right, now that we're back, we will use these, or we'll just use the um, air altar and it'll craft our rune essence into air runes. And that's how rune crafting works just like the normal way. All right, this time we will allow him to send us to the Wizard's Tower. That way we don't have to travel all that way ourselves because, as y'all know, we are lazy. All right, so last time we were here, he told us about the rune span, but we're going to go ahead and do his other options real quick. What do you sell? You can buy wicked robes from me. The hood will give you runes and rune essence and even teleport you to the rune crafting altars. The rest of the robes will improve the hood and make you lighter. Which we can get the hood for free, so even once we're members, we won't buy that. I can also recolor these robes for you and provide you with an esteem icon for them to show off how much you've trained energy siphoning. 
I can also provide you with staves made of rune essence. These are ineffective as melee weapons, but they can store the charge for spells which only cost runes and are good at defending against magical attacks. Lastly, I can sell you a rune essence pouch that is much bigger than any you would find elsewhere. This pouch will not degrade as quickly as other pouches, but once it has degraded, it will turn to dust. All right, and can I see your shop? Okay, so yeah, we won't have to spend any points on the hood. What the main reason we're going to use this shop for, or like long term, is getting esteem rank one, which is going to cost us 211,860 esteem points, which we will be well after 99 before we get. And I don't, I mean, do y'all think it makes sense to buy the rest of the outfit before getting the esteem? Because in the grand, uh, the grand scheme of things, the outfit isn't like really expensive. But let me know what y'all think about that. But we're going to go ahead and dive into low-level rune span. Hello, how can I help you? Hello, who are you? I'm Wizard Phoenix. I'm a student of runecrafting. So this shouldn't be identical to the previous dialogue, but it may be similar. Ah, pleased to meet you, Wizard Phoenix. I'm Lore Lovers RS. What are you doing here? I'm creating runes by siphoning energy out of the rune span. Creating runes by siphoning? Yes, it's a new way to make runes. I discovered it, actually. Why don't you just use the altars? That is another way, that is another one of my discoveries. Runecrafting altars will not last forever. One day the altars will run out. Run out? Yes, of course. It is still only a theory. The runecrafting guild wizards are still skeptical, but they cannot prove me wrong. It's weird that this is very similar dialogue, but this one isn't voice acted. How will humans perform magic if they cannot make runes? Exactly. This is why learning to siphon energy from the world around us is important. You mean I could create runes by pulling energy from Gilinor itself? Theoretically, yes, but there is no runecrafter skilled enough to do this yet. In theory, runecrafting and magic should be a self-supporting uh, cycle. So how can I learn to siphon energy if it's so difficult? That is why we are in this area. In the rune span, energy is still in a very raw state and is not tightly bound to matter as it is in Gilinor. The wizards of the runecrafting guild have been using their their tower to study runic energy in the rune span for years. So that means we are outside the runecrafting guild, yes. So how do you make... How do you make runes by siphoning? Well, firstly, I have to warn you that any runes you make here are taken by the runecrafting guild when you leave. They discover the portal to this plane and have laid claim to it as their own. So yeah, with rune span, it's more AFK, but you don't keep any runes. Don't worry too much about that, though. Any runes you do make will award you points to spend at my shop in the wizard's tower. You will learn to become a better runecrafter faster here, too. Which is that part is kind of debatable. How do I get rune essence? Firstly, you can only train runecrafting here with rune essence found in this plane. So how do I get rune essence? There are two ways to get rune essence. If you have no rune essence, then you can use the floating essence to collect a small amount. If you do have rune essence, then the best way to get more is to siphon from the creatures that are walking around. Siphon from the creatures? Yes, the creatures that you can find here are made up of rune essence that is bound together with runic energy. If you take away all that energy, then you are just left with rune essence. If you are in a hurry and don't want to siphon from the creatures, then you can chip some of their rune essence away from them using your runes. I would advise against doing it on, to the same creature twice, though. How do I make runes? Once you have rune essence from this plane, you can siphon energy from the creatures and pockets of energy that appear randomly on islands in this area. The energy in the creatures is not as dense as it is in the pockets of energy, so they will give you a small amount of runes and not much experience. The pockets of energy are the best way to train. These can easily be, sp be spotted because when one appears, the runecrafting wizards will mark the floor around it to display when energy can be siphoned from it. The pockets of energy appear in random places and you can find yourself on an island where there are none. The best way for you to train is to find the complex type of energy, the most complex type of energy you can siphon and siphon from that. How do I get around? Getting around this plane can be tricky as it is made up of floating islands. Fortunately, the runecrafting guild wizards have installed crossing points. For the cost of a few runes, you can activate these points which will enchant you and take you to another island. Since these are made by wizards, it is not as simple as hopping from island to island though. The type of runes required are shown on the crossing point. As you approach a crossing point, the far side will glow to show where it goes to. If you have the runes to use the crossing point, the near side will, gl will glow as well. Not all the crossing points will charge you. If you try to go from a small island to a big island, then the crossing point is free. This is to prevent you from becoming stranded. And is there anything else to do here? 
the wizards have a tendency to get themselves stuck on islands and once in a while you will hear one of them calling to you. If you find and help the wizard, he will share some of his runecrafting knowledge with you. I don't think he told us about the rune sphere though. Hello, how is the training going? This is tricky, but I am getting the hang of it. Can I help you with anything else? Can you help me find the wizard in... No, can you help me find the rune sphere? I don't feel the rune sphere influence at this time. They didn't really explain the rune sphere though. But whatever, we're going to go ahead and get started. So we will collect the floating essence here. So I'm going to start by siphoning from the creatures. Because whenever you siphon from the creatures, you'll get uh, some more rune essence. More than just whenever you collect the essence. And we have a rune crafting level up to level 5. But, oh and here's a mining level from I don't know when. Probably when we were mining the rune essence. But yeah, so once we siphon, I think it's five bits of energy from one of the creatures. So like the Essling here, it'll give us, let's see how many, I think it's 50? Yeah, because now we're up to 70. Now, something I'm not sure about is I don't know if these creatures, like, because you figure they're, they may not be sapient, but you figure they're sentient, right? Like, is this hurting them? I don't know. Like, is this just like killing an animal? <laughs> I'm not sure, but we're just going to roll with it and just try to ignore our conscience at the moment. And we'll go ahead and claim our daily challenge. And we're going to miss out on one of these since I didn't do the smithing one and the construction one. And I'm kind of aggravated about that. Oh, and another one up to level 9. And that is level 10 room crafting, which in all honesty, I thought we were going to be here longer, but I think we've kind of learned everything for now. Huh. Okay, so I don't necessarily want to start a quest this far into the video, but I also don't want to like finish a video under 15 minutes unless like in the future if y'all tell me I want shorter videos. But I think what I'm going to do is set me like a 30 minute timer and see how many achievements I can knock out. And then I'll just kind of condense that together to finish the video. So hopefully this will be somewhat entertaining. Can you bless my ring? Ah, you wish to show your devotion to Saradoman by dedicating a ring to him? Very well, it would be my pleasure to assist. Father Eric describes the symbol or inscribes the symbol of Saradoman on your ring's signet face and offers a brief benediction over it. And this will be good whenever we have to do God Wars Dungeon. Um, and also, I believe, after the One Piercing Note quest, or once we get to where we're doing God Books, and we need like an item of Saradoman, the Ring of Devotion will count, I believe. I forgot I was going to need two clay rings. I could have saved myself a trip. Because we have to sell one to Morgan. But this is going to be kind of wonky lore-wise. Because... He's going to try to tell us about the Vampire Slayer quest with Count Draenor. But we're just selling him a clay ring. And that's just the end of it. He's like, I don't care about the vampire. <laughs> but whatever. Now I got to kill a rat. And I don't know when the rats were added that have the arrows in their back. Also, I did not expect them to have 1,450 health. But... Yeah, I don't know when they were added with the arrows, but they're really cool. Oh, and we have a an achievement and a fire making level. And I believe we're about to get another achievement. Boom, there we go. Ratatouille. I was going to do the achievement that requires us to craft a water rune but i forgot i don't have a water talisman and i can get one from the blue wizard in port serum but we haven't been there yet so and lore wise it doesn't make sense until we uncover the city i don't want to just go get the talisman and not actually start exploring the city and again it's just a little restriction that i'm putting on myself all right so we're gonna try to get the ghost speak amulet how careless can you get? Those things aren't easy to come by, you know. It's a good job I've got a spare. Perfect. And then we can pick up the one that we dropped. We're about to go be mean to this little trapped demon. 
Yeah, he didn't like that. All right, Dumbledore. I mean, Cedridor. Teleport us. Fancy. It is so annoying every time I teleport to Draenor how it tries to get me to do necromancy. I'm like, no, we're not doing that yet. We won't be doing that for a while. I don't know how I haven't accessed the bank here in Draenor, but there we go. All right, get him to check my bank for junk. Perfect. And then there is a telescope upstairs, and we're going to do a little bit of snooping. And is it weird that he doesn't kill us? Apparently not. You look through the telescope, and he's spying on the wizard's tower. Oh, look, there's Professor Fingle Dingle Florp, or whatever his name was. I see you've got your telescope pointed to the wizard's tower, or at the wizard's tower. Oh, do I? Well, why does that interest you? Well, you robbed a bank, and I bet you're now planning something to do to that tower. Robbed a bank? What in the world can make you think I robbed a bank? I've seen the bank, er, the bank security recording. You broke into the bank, killed a load of people, and you even stole that party hat. And I bet that's how you got all this fancy furniture. The bank showed you the security recording? That is pretty surprising. Oh well, at least you'll never be able to tell the bank about me. They'll never listen. So you're just going to get away with it? I certainly hope so. But that's, well, it's wrong. Wrong? Wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong. I've spent my whole life traveling the world, doing quests for people, saving lives, saving villages from terrifying monsters, and all that sort of thing. Now I'm old, and where do I have to live? In this freezing old house next to a pigsty, with a bunch of yobs outside who can't keep their hands off the market stalls? What sort of reward is that? So don't talk to me about right and wrong. Maybe someone should talk to you about right and wrong. Bah! Let's kick the bed here, see if anything happens. I think there's like a monster or something. I don't know if I've ever, I ever really figured out what's up with the kicking the bed thing. All right, so we can't do the water rune thing yet, and we're not gonna do the sewers under the jail house just because, again, we haven't really explored that yet. And, oh, so we can do a thing with Beefy Bill. We haven't talked to him yet. Oh, and we have a defense level up to level nine. Beefy Bill at your service. I can bank your beef, your cow hides, and your flour, and I've got other stuff for trade. What's it to be? I want you to bank... Wait, no, first, who are you? Let's get the lore. I'm Beefy Bill, a specialist meat transporter and general merchant. People bring me their beef, cow hides, and flour, and I transport it all to their bank, keeping a mere 10% for my services. I also have stuff for sale. I want you to bank things for me. Excellent, just hand me the items, and I'll work out a price for you. I charge a 10% commission. All right, so let's do the cow hide. And that's way more than 10%. That's 33%, but sure. All right, there we go. So we've kind of capped out at what we can do in Lumbridge for the time being. So we're here in Varrock talking to Thessalia. Would you like to buy any fine clothes? Or if you're more after fancy dress costumes or commemorative capes, talk to Granny Iffy. What do you, what do you have? Well, I have a number of fine pieces of clothing on sale, or if you prefer, I can offer you an exclusive total clothing makeover. Tell me about this makeover, certainly. Here at the Salia's Fine Clothing Boutique, we offer a unique service where we will totally revamp your outfit to your choosing. Tired of always wearing the same old outfit day in, day out? Then this is the service for you. So what do you say, interested? I'd like to change my outfit, please. You can't try them on while wearing armor. Take it off as, oh, okay. All right, change my outfit. I'm not wearing armor. Oh, my cape. And my hat. I'm noob. Let's go ahead and take the staff off just in case. Okay, change my outfit. Third time to the charm. Wonderful. Feel free to try on some items and see if there's anything you would like. Okay, thanks. Alright, there we go. Alright, gonna have Aubrey teleport us, but we're gonna talk to him first. Do you want to buy some runes? Um, no thanks. Will he tell us any lore? No. Okay, so let's just have him teleport us then. And that's an achievement. Another achievement. Oh, and we got woodcutting level 4. Alright, I believe that's the last achievement that we'll be able to do. So that was about 19 or 20 achievements done, which I don't think is too bad considering we were reading stuff and just kind of farting around. All right, with that, I think I'm going to wrap up the video. Hopefully that was enough content for this episode. I know it was kind of all over the place with the rune span and then the achievements. But hopefully next episode, if things stay on track, 
we're gonna start another quest and where I'm standing right now is a sneak peek preview for anyone that can figure it out for the next quest that we will be doing. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for more RuneScape related content. If you have any requests, recommendations, suggestions, or questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I hope everyone has a fantastic day, and I will see y'all later. Bye!